right friends in the uh, last couple of sessions uh, we had really uh, something fundamental about what iot is how exactly iot is uh, um, structured what are all the basic characteristics of iot uh, all those fundamentals is what we it touched in the last session and uh, it was not so technical uh, i should say it was an introductory session so now here what i'm going to do is i'm going to give you the technical uh, view of how exactly iot is architected uh, which means iot uh, stack is what i'm going to uh, discuss right now along with some examples i'm going to show you some demo as well uh, which will let you understand things uh, fundamentally better so what is uh, iot all about how many layers are there so i'm going to take it in a layered approach the first layer is uh, referred as the layer for sensors so uh, let's take any sensor temperature sensor humidity sensor pressure accelerator or it can be uh, industrial automation side it can be plc actuator something like that it's there in the uh, second half of it the the first step is to get the inputs from the sensor which means the sensor measures and it gives you sensory data which means the temperature is measured the humidity is measured and that data is ready with you right now and where the data goes the data goes to the microcontroller so this layer is called as the processing and control action layer this layer is referred as the processing layer and control action layer so what will we have here whatever data we have received from the previous stage which means from the sensors are uh, getting fed in into microcontroller which means the microcontrollers receive it and they start processing it which means they start analyzing it so what are all the kinds of uh, uh, microcontrollers that are available in the market we have lot of microcontroller boards available these days arduino boards raspberry pi uh, we have got microcontrollers from pic arm intel lot many microcontrollers are available and operating system support is really needed for this and artas linux android lot many stuff are available there as well so this layer is a layer 2 now comes the layer 3 where we need to talk about hardware interface so how do we uh, really use our um, hardware how do we really connect to our hardware uh, so we can use U- usb we can use rs232 serial peripheral interface scan all these are the uh, things that we really use for uh, interfacing to the uh, hardware so the first step the data is being um, readied which means the temperature data pressure data is ready the second stage it goes into the microcontroller the third stage we need to connect to the appropriate hardware to uh, do the further work so what is the next thing so we need uh, technologies to transfer the data which means we need uh, methods we need uh, wifi we need connectivity to transfer the data so what kind of uh, supports are available these days it can be short range or long range it can be nfc it can be rfid wifi bluetooth Uh, bluetooth low energy lifi uh, 4g so all these are the technologies that you have in place towards interfacing uh, towards really sending the data from one end to another end so now you uh, get a overall picture this way i am having the temperature uh, measured i am having the temperature measured and it goes into the microcontroller and from there i need to store it elsewhere so i need interfacing properly to be done so i i spoke about the interfacing uh, standards available the protocol standard parallel standards available there serial communication standards available there then uh, how do i really transfer the data which i have uh, measured so i need to really transfer it uh, through some protocols which are available in the market for wifi or wired or whatever that's what i have communicated here and finally uh, the messages are transferred which means i need to send the message um, i need to send the message and i need to also establish the session so for example uh, i keep sending the data uh, the temperature data is measured for about say about 15 minutes consistently and i need to push them all onto the cloud so i need a protocol for it so how do i use it i use a protocol called mqtt here for example i'm i'm just saying it as an instance so what will happen this mqtt will start collecting all the data and once the internet connectivity is available it will push it onto the cloud so we need these kind of messaging protocols as well as we need sessioning protocols which means session session by session i can track so i need to really have the session control there so i need all those in picture so now you uh, once i complete this total cycle you will get a clear understanding as in what are all the layers that are involved and next finally the user experience and visualization layer what do you mean by that sir it's very simple i actually have everything as a uh, as an ui finally the end user has a ui so it has to be presented in such a way that it it is accessible and most importantly it is convenient for me to understand and the technologies which are behind um, are analytics basically i need to present the data that i have received in a uh, well analyzed manner it has to be analyzed so data analytics is one part of it 
that's that's there and it can be object oriented technologies or it can be procedure oriented technologies that we use dbms sql all these are related to the data being presented well to the user this is layer 6 coming to the final layer application layer okay sir i have got all these available in my hand right now so what am i going to do i am going to build a smart home i am going to build a smart city i am going to build a smart parking smart energy smart agriculture smart water smart retail what is that that's going to be the layer 7 so finally what are you going to do that's called application and that application comes as layer 7 so i can put it in this way first identify the hardware which means the sensor that is layer 1 second Uh, get the data from the sensor uh, appropriately and connect it to the microcontroller the microcontroller receives the data layer 2 the data now has to go to the cloud and i need to somehow send the data to the cloud uh, through appropriate hardware as well as uh, through appropriate protocols so here i need a uh, protocols for uh, interfacing here i need hardware for interfacing to the microcontroller and i need um, l- technologies i need wifi and non wifi standards etc for uh, uh, really getting the data pushed onto the cloud and and then the next level is going to be uh, how do i send the messages so i need to be careful about sending the messages that's what i said as fifth layer so there we have uh, mqtt and all those stuff coming into picture and then present it in a way that the user would really uh, love to see it and finally uh, you can build applications over it right sir you have conveyed all these so can we have a practical uh, um, exposure to all these layers yes i am going to show you that right now with a very simple example um i am going to just give you a very simple example which we have built uh, this example will really help you in understanding what exactly this layers are all about so you can see that here uh, a video is running in front of you there i have got lot of vegetables in a basket and i have got sensors available there this is humidity sensor or uh, this is temperature sensor and water sensor available here so that that takes the data about this rotten vegetables and good vegetables which are all available here so that data comes out and it goes to the microcontroller board i have got a microcontroller here and it is powered by a, a small power bank here so the data goes on to the cloud right now and then the data gets analyzed there as in the quality of these vegetables whatever i have shown here is okay this is cloud this is called ada fruit cloud that whatever i have used so the temperature data the uh, humidity data and the odor data gets into the cloud so all these will be analyzed and then based on the analysis i get an app here this is what the user interface is all about so i have spoken about the layer 6 right so the user interface is very simple here and in that i grade all the boxes which means each dabba is each box is graded as grade a b or c a being the best quality c being the worst quality so when i click it it will also tell me where i should deliver this box simple this is the end to end solution that you can uh, refer to while understanding the architecture of our stack of iot it starts from the selection of sensors it ends it ends with how do you present it where do you use it it's very simple so selection of components is the toughest task in iot because you have lot many components really available in picture so this is now uh, being presented as a block diagram in front of you you can see that i measured temperature humidity and odor i put it into the node mcu node mcu is nothing but the microcontroller and it is connected to wifi so first three steps are over and first four steps are in fact over and i put it into the cloud and after i put it into the cloud i start analyzing it and then i give a message to the i give a data to the android app whichever i have developed which can show the status as well as the grade and then the direction as in where to deliver it so all these statistics finally uh, comes through the internet and it is called internet of things for you so this is called iot stack totally so you can uh, polish it you can add more content to it this 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 could really give you a preliminary view of how or what are the layers you can have uh, to build a complete iot application and the next one is going to be very interesting which is called enabling technology so we have lot of technologies we have lot of uh, uh, devices that are being used for building a, a complete end to end iot solution iot is not one technology iot is not one device as i keep telling you this iot is a collection of so many things starting from sensors embedded systems the data analytics the mobile apps mobile internet security aspects the protocols the cloud storage all these Um, to be very serious about it i would have missed many so all these plus so many technologies so many um, devices together really bring iot so all these are called as enabling technologies these enabling technologies uh, can be categorized in such a way that uh, these technologies help in acquiring data which means sensing data these technologies help in analyzing data which means processing data 
these technologies help in taking the control action which means what to do is decided through this technologies and finally it also takes care of the security aspect and privacy aspect of your data it's very important right if you see closely uh, what are all the uh, enabling technologies or enabling things that we are going to look into point number 1 uh, we do have a, a lot of sensors that we are using right so start from the um, very small camera that we use for uh, a home security system or any surveillance system whatever we know so the camera is here in front of you right now and then moisture sensor vibration sensor ph sensor temperature sensor par passive infrared sensor sir how do we use all this sir simple uh, the weather tracking system shall be certainly using the moisture temperature and humidity so all these are provided by sensors available in the market there is a sensor called bme 280 which can give you the uh, temperature which can give you the pressure data and humidity data all in one shot that's that's shown here uh, there is something called as human presence detection so when i build a security system i need to see if humans are present in that area so for that i can use passive infrared sensor par sensor we call it and we take data from the vehicles uh, to uh, analyze if the vehicle is going the right speed if the parameters in the vehicle are all safe and that is called as obd that obd is a, a collection of sensors together and we we have elm 23327 that i have mentioned here for the reference uh, i use this quite frequently to get all the data about the uh, car car parameters for example what is the steering angle uh, what is the rate at which the rpm is currently working in the machine what is the speed that i am going on all this data will be given out so all these together are called sensors and these sensors come together really to get you the overall data that you look into so without sensors nothing will happen and these are one of the very important enabling technologies coming next to the uh, very important component cloud computing well sir i get the data and the data is really in plenty where do i store it i can store it locally in my machine but i do have to take care of the infrastructure i do have to take care of the methods that i store how do i flush the data when i do not want it all those are really really painful and instead of going to that people nowadays start preferring cloud computing so what do you mean by cloud computing simple you use the storage which is provided by somebody else you can either rent it or pay for subscription um, there are a lot many methods available for using it there are free clouds also available that's what i use for most of my projects because they are at academic level when you go to industrial uh, level projects you may have to uh, get the subscription appropriately and then use it so there are three kinds of uh, uh, cloud services that are normally provided iaas infrastructure as service paas platform as service saas software as service let's start from the last what do you mean by uh, software as a service simple one complete application software or software application will be provided to the user and that application is available for you to use and you can pay for the uh, usage uh, either uh, monthly or yearly subscriptions are available for it now platform as a service it will provide you the complete api complete library tools etc you will have to develop application over it it means they provide you the platform to develop and you will have to pay accordingly for it and infrastructure as a service well everything is available there you will get a virtual machine available for you the virtual machines can be created as per your wish the users can select whatever os even they want all those are uh, um, left to the user and it's completely virtual there pay as you use you can choose the virtual machines over the physical machines and that's exactly is what called as iaas and some of the available uh, cloud services in the market now which are very famous amazon web services microsoft azure adafruit and many more i use adafruit for my applications because it is simple and it's free so i use that and you have paid versions available as well where you can have more data being pushed in so i push a little data so i use the uh, free subscriptions there and the next enabling technology is big data what do you mean by big data sir simple you get data out of every sensor right so we are talking about sensors everywhere and it's it's all data 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 so it's all big data together very large data is coming out of the sensors which we have connected together to build an internet of things application there are four very basic uh, features or characteristics of uh, uh, big data available uh, to be learned first one is volume you get a huge volume of data from everywhere nowadays Uh, thanks to the uh, cheapest uh, and uh, less expensive options of uh, mobile services and internet service providers available to us so we survey them and most importantly the storage has become cheaper as well uh, getting a 32 gb storage is in hundreds of rupees now in india so it's, it's pretty cheap so we survive there second 
variety uh, the data is now coming in variety um, say audio video text image and many more so we get a lot of uh, different varieties of data third speed the velocity at which you get the data in is really really unimaginable uh, in the sense uh, the data rate the uh, sensors which sense the environment and then it feeds in the data for example temperature is really really uh, unbelievable it, it feeds in the data at a millisecond microsecond speed and it, it gets updated quite often so the, it's also very fast thanks to the available sensor capacities and most importantly the internet speed so all these stuff really help us out and finally uh, there is one more feature which is actually people will call it three v's and people will call it also four v's so i call it four v's the fourth one is called veracity what do you mean by veracity it's very simple the data is highly dynamic in nature and it's getting changed so we may not zero into a particular uh, we there will be an ambiguity so the data is incomplete uh, before it uh, reaches the destination so that's called veracity and there is an incompleteness which is associated with it these four are referred as or these three are referred as the fundamental characteristics of big data and they are the challenges to really uh, look into and this is one of the very important enabling technologies before we go into the next one <coughs> excuse me uh, you need to also understand who uh, generates the data it is you and me it is the sensors in the security system it is the weather monitoring system it is the data from the car it is the data from the navigation system uh, it is the data from the water quality monitoring system data from the wearables you have a band right the band releases data every now and then and data from industrial equipment for example a motor can uh, release its health status uh data from bridges and roads for example a bridge can release data about how many cars are traveling there how many vehicles are going there what is the traffic intensity there and your tweet and my tweets they are all data so we all generate data and it's data everywhere this is one of the most important enabling technologies for iot and the next one is very important embedded boards and systems i have listed three uh, boards here one is from intel this is called intel up squared grew iot development kit and this one when i am moving here you can understand that this is raspberry pi this is arduino now they are all driven by microcontrollers and process at times so they are capable and they are really really capable in such a way that they are mini computers to be very precise these are used for uh, product testing and prototyping some of the cases they are used in the final product also so we quite frequently use all these to build our final uh, prototype to understand if our proposed system works fine and finally uh, protocols there are lot of protocols which are involved in the complete process right from the beginning till the end there are so many protocols which are involved and we are going to have a separate session about the protocols which are involved in the uh, entire iot uh, stack and the protocols takes care of addressing it takes care the f- takes care the format of the messages which are going to be sent it is also looking into the message security it is looking into the routing flow control error control monitoring sequencing billing uh, retransmission guidelines segmentation of the data uh, right from the physical layer component till the application layer component you have lot of protocols really in picture and they are all to be learned we will have a detailed session shortly which will let you know about that and finally the last enabling technology is an user interface whenever you build a system the system should be a really in such a way that the end user enjoys using it which means i build a system which is very complex and the user has to really learn a lot of stuff to use it nobody will buy it so when you build an iot application the end user is something someone like a, a normal man who need not really know a lot about the technological background and he should not be a uh, force to learn a lot before he uses the device so the user interface is very important uh, most of the cases the iot application will end up with an app which can be a mobile android app or an ios app or it could be a web app so in that case it has to be very simple it has to have intuitive interfaces and all those are really important these five can be qualified as enabling technologies for your iot and i hope i have given you the inputs that are required for this topic i'll soon come back with the next topic with more inputs thank you for supporting me thank you for following my channel I'll come back to you soon with more materials. Thank you.